What's happening guys, Scott from A Hornet's Nest. Welcome back to episode nine of Tutorial Tuesday. It is so good to see you and it's our first episode of 2024. And to kick it off, we're going into potentiometers, how to use them, wire them up and read them using an analog value and how to use the serial monitor within Arduino. So to kick it off, what is a potentiometer? We look down here, we've got three different types of potentiometers that you might come across in your projects. The most common one I'm expecting you to know is these V10K linear potentiometers, and they're the ones you most likely be using for your volume knobs and brightness control within your cockpit. The B is a code for linear, and it's a straight line linear progression from zero to maximum resistance, and the 10K is just the resistance value. If you're following along using the LEGO Super Starter Kit, you'll probably find one of these little potentiometers in your kit, and it's got the code B103. That is a linear potentiometer, one zero, and then three zeros on there, so it's 10,000 ohms. So it's another 10K resistor. And then one of these that you might just find for 80 cents on AliExpress. So how does a potentiometer work? Well. It has a variable resistance strip, and if we look at the screen, here is the anatomy of a potentiometer. It's got three pins, and we can see down here, all of ours have three pins as well. The two outer pins are fixed terminals, and they connect to ground and five volts, and the middle connects to your Arduino, and that is connected to a little wiper blade that connects onto the resistive strip. Now, without going into voltage dividing and the real theory behind it, with a potentiometer, it varies the voltage coming out of the middle strip, whereas the difference between a rheostat is a rheostat only uses two pins of the three, and it varies the current. We are varying voltage, and with that varying voltage, we can then take a reading, create it into an analog reading, and have that go into the Arduino. So if we had to go and connect ours with ground on the left pin and five volts on the right pin, as we move our rotary knob to the right, the voltage will increase closer to five volts. And by the time it gets fully clockwise, it will read five volts through the input pin. As we go counterclockwise, it will reduce in voltage coming through the input pin and will eventually read zero volts as it reads fully counterclockwise. And the reason for that is the little wiper creates a resistance division, causing two sets of resistance on either side, creating a natural build voltage divider. Now, I'm not going to confuse you and bore 90% of you with voltage divider theory. Just know that how you wire it up determines which way you have to turn it to get maximum voltage. And when you turn towards 5 volts, that is when your voltage or your analog value will increase. Well, you've heard me say analog value. Well, what is an analog value? Well, an Arduino isn't a multimeter. It can't just say, hey, I'm reading 4.2 volts, I'm reading one volt. It reads a scaled version of that. And that scaled version is a 10-bit number between zero and 1023. Now, I bet if you think back to your time playing flight sims, DCS, anything with a joystick, you will see that value of zero and 1023, because that is the range that your potentiometer can read in when Arduino is dealing with five volts in an analog pattern. Zero volts is zero, five volts is 1023. And if we look at the little graph on the screen, you can see that as you linearly progress upwards as the voltage changes, so will your analog value. Well, I think that's enough to get us started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little potentiometer from the Allegu starter kit. And the reason for that is it's a bit easier to plug onto the breadboard and have you follow along at the same time. I don't particularly like using the little ones from the LEGO starter kit just because they don't feel as nice. These B10Ks are just super smooth to like twist. Whereas these ones are, they almost have a bit of grit to them. But remember with potentiometers, do not force it. If your value is not reading an exact zero or an exact 1023, don't try crank it just to get the value. You will break the potentiometer, they're super sensitive. The reason you're probably not getting the maximum or minimum values is because of a circuit issue, not because of the potentiometer, especially if it's new. Maybe if it's an old one, you might get um, just dirt and grit on the resistive strip. Now, I'm gonna get my breadboard and I'm gonna 
Pop these pins on either side of the trench, just so it's easy for us to connect it to. Give it a nice firm push down. Lovely. I'm gonna grab some jumper cables and I'm gonna connect the bus bar down here to the five and ground on the Arduino. The reason I'm connecting it to the bus bar is it just makes this circuit a bit neater and then you'll be able to see more clearly what we are doing. Lovely. Well, we need to be able to connect our potentiometer to the bus and I'm gonna use some straight line jumper cables that are a little bit firmer than these flexible ones. Like that. Here is one for ground. I really recommend using and getting a set of these if you're really gonna get into breadboard prototyping. They make your circuit a whole lot easier to read because you're not gonna have so many looping rats nesting wires. Great, so we're gonna connect our ground to the left pin. And I'll tell you why I'm strolling. And we're gonna connect the right pin to five volts. Lovely. The reason for that is as I turn clockwise, I want the value to increase and I want it to increase towards five volts. You can have them the other way and that's completely fine. There is no positive and negative pin on this. They're just two fixed terminals. And then I'm gonna connect the middle pin and the middle pin is on every potentiometer to a one. Any A pin on your Arduino is fine. It's the analog pin. You need to connect it to an A pin Otherwise you're not gonna be able to get an analog reading. So there we got it. We've got the Arduino supplying power to the bus and we've got a ground wire going to the left lug. We've got five volts connecting to the right lug and then we've got A1 connecting to the wiper pin. Well, that's pretty much done. Let's get into Arduino and get coding. So the first thing we're doing in Arduino is grabbing a new sketch and ensuring that we have the correct Arduino selected, which is the Mega 2560 connected to COM3. We're gonna add a bit of space to the top of my code, but what do we do at the top? We write our variables at the top, as that is the first thing Arduino is gonna be reading. Now we know a variable ready to go, and that is we wanna declare a one or something, and we're gonna call it int, because it's a whole number, a one, even though a isn't really a number, it's going in the back end know that A1 really connects to a certain pin number. So it will still be an int. Int hot pin for potentiometer pin equals A1. Well, A1 is a input because it's going to Arduino. And to make it an input, we need to declare the input. And that's using pin mode. Pin mode, open brackets hot pin. Now we've done input pull-ups, which were for our digital reads. Well, we can just use input because there's nothing special with it. It's just an input. And all capitals, don't forget that. Input, close bracket, semicolon. Look at that. Well, we now know what the pot pin is. We want to write a variable that will store the data of pot pin or the potentiometers pin. So we can come back and create a new variable. And it's gonna be a whole number because it's zero to 1023. It's 1,024 different numbers we can use. Int hot value equals, well, it doesn't really equal anything. So we can just go semicolon because the Arduino will write to it. We don't have to create anything. And now we can come down and look because now we are gonna actually tell the Arduino how to read it. And to do that, we want to write to pot value, pot value equals analog read, goes orange when we open the brackets showing that it's correct. And then if we get our suggestion here, just whatever the pin is, pot in close brackets, semicolon. That's pretty much it. That's pretty cool. Within one, two, three, four, four lines of code, because we've got our two variables, our setup and our loop, we are able to read the value of our potentiometer. Well, let's go and press upload. Uploading, compiling, done. Well, 
who am I meant to know? And re remember last time we, we had the same issue with digital readers. Like, oh, well, how am I meant to know what it's doing? And we used an LED light, but how do you use an LED light to tell you a number between zero and 1023? Well, we could get a little TV screen or an LCD screen here and write that up and use more code. Or we can use something that is underrated within the Arduino world, and that is the serial monitor. Be friends with the serial monitor, use it for all your debugging. It is going to help you create a much cleaner, much better piece of code, especially when you come back to it 12 months later and you want to see what the Arduino is actually reading. So to do that, we are going to learn something new. It's a new year with new lessons. Things are actually starting off really well. And what we're going to use is the serial monitor. And to initialize it, we're going to go capital S serial. It gives us a list of different things we can do with it. But we're just going to go serial.begin because we want it to start. Open brackets. And we want to enter its baud rate. B-A-U-D. The baud rate is essentially how many symbols per second is it going to process through. And for stuff like this, 9600 is a super common number close brackets, semicolon. Now DCS BIOS uses 11 5200. That's how many symbols it's processing every second. It's way faster than what we're doing here, but it really needs that because it's so much data. We're doing one potential, but it's really doesn't need that much to process at all. Well, we've got the serial begin and that's in the setup loop. Now we're gonna go into the void loop and we're gonna write serial.print and if we just have a look at the suggestions we've got two versions. I'm going to show you what the print version does first and then you're going to realize why we use print ln or print line. So we go serial print hot value because we want it to print on our serial monitor the value of the potentiometer. Close brackets and look we want to we're not computers ourselves, so we're gonna need a bit of time for our brain to process it. So let's just add a delay and we're gonna call it delay time, close brackets. Remember, don't hard code numbers, just create a value up at the top here, int delay time equals 100 milliseconds. There we go, beautiful. Don't hard code in the loop. And we're gonna go upload. Now in the new version of Arduino, it will actually pop up in the output here. When we go and click up the top right, serial monitor. Well, you can kind of see here that it's just printing the super long line of 50,000 numbers. And we were expecting it with it fully clockwise to five volts to read the full value of the scale of zero to 1023. And you can almost break it apart. There's a 1020, there's a 1020, 1020, 1021. That's what, that's what the serial line does. It just prints everything in a long line and that's really not helpful for us at all. So if we go and change that, we're gonna go serial.println. Serial.println pot value. And we're gonna go upload. Compiling, and now it prints lines. That's gonna be a lot cleaner for us to use because now we can see what the most recent value is. Now you can see it's ranging between 1020, there's sometimes a 1019 in there. As I play with the circuit, you can see that it's just a connection issue that's causing it not to read the full amount. There's a 1021, a 1022. And as we go counterclockwise with the potentiometer, you can see that value decreasing. And it's gonna decrease all the way to zero by the time we get to fully counterclockwise. Now you can see it's having little jitters because the circuit is just a non-soldered circuit. It's using a breadboard. Now, the older your breadboard is, the worse the connection you're going to have, the more jittering you're going to have. But you can see it's eventually stabilized at zero. We now go clockwise about half and it's around the 530s, which is halfway between zero and 1023. So that is the importance of the potentiometer. 
you are getting a voltage out of it, not a different current. So if you think you are able to dim an LED using a potentiometer, all you were doing was reducing the voltage to the LED. You weren't actually dimming it how the LED was designed to be dimmed using pulse width modulation. And that's gonna be one of our next lessons coming up is how to effectively dim an LED, making sure you get the correct wavelength out of it. Now, what we can do is we can actually remove this potentiometer. And now that you know how it's meant to be working, we can go put one of our favorites in. We'll just pin that one there. Just gotta readjust where the pins are because it's a bit bigger. going to plug the yellow one in the center there and now you can see it has a much more stable voltage value just because of the quality of the potentiometer itself now when i say quality we're not talking about a 20 dollars potentiometer these are super cheap off aliexpress or ebay buy them in the hundreds they just have a much nicer resistance value see we can get that straight to 1023 with the same circuit. So we could see that the last potentiometer must have had a bit of an issue with its resistance strip causing the issue of flickering values. Now you can fix that just using a bit of contact cleaner. So it's really not bad at all. Now we go all the way to the left. Let it sort itself. It's gone fallen out of the breadboard. There we go, it is reading zero. Now, breadboards are great for prototyping. They are not great for reading values and interpreting values if it's designed for your legitimate code. Always get the values from your soldered circuit board. That way you're getting what your cockpit's actually gonna represent, not what the breadboard thinks is connecting. So yeah, that is pretty cool. So that was a very quick lesson to start the year off about potentiometers, why they're used and how to read them and how to get some debugging information out of Arduino. I'm looking forward to the next couple of episodes because we're going into how to dim LEDs effectively, how to read multiple switches using one signal into Arduino, and we are going to start building the F-18. So I promised you we would not start until we're all at a level that we could all follow along. And I'm pretty sure we're there. With a couple more lessons, we'll be good to go. And then anything on top of that will just be an ad hoc lesson on what you need to know for that specific panel. So have a great week. Enjoy your flights and as always stay safe and I will see you in the next episode.